morning everybody. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I'm a little later than normal and I apologize. I had a cater to my body this morning. I needed to soak and do a treatment so I'm late and I guess that's that. That's dealing with a hijack in my schedule and hopefully you guys will pop on and join me here live and if not I totally understand because I am late but I'm going to rattle on and you guys can watch this after the fact and those of you on YouTube can watch this at your leisure um, it is a beautiful gorgeous sunny day here but it is five degrees it is really cold uh, we got about 20 inches of snow last week Wednesday to Sunday uh, we got a lot of snow and a really weird storm blew through uh, snow was going sideways and we were getting a lot of thunder so it was pretty interesting but uh, we're supposed to get a bunch more snow upcoming here um, this weekend so Idaho is starting to look like Idaho again rather than a very early spring which is what we were beginning to wonder we were gonna have so anyway today our topic was requested by one of our followers Chad um, the, the subject is how to handle the attacks on our days. Um, attacks come in many ways, whether it's uh, just, you know, like we talked about before a couple weeks ago, you know, the dishevelment in our schedules, and sometimes you have divine um, interruptions, and other times you have uh, just haywire going on in your day, and it's learning how to handle those moments. and. Why have I been covering all this stuff so diligently this year is because if we have the coping mechanisms and the skills embedded in ourselves to handle situations, when they come our way, they won't be near as much of a struggle for us. And it's basically like having the tools in our arsenal or tools in our toolbox that enable us to cope with our day to day. So. I think today will probably be the last subject that we will focus on with living intentionally and being organized and um, the different skill sets required. If you're just joining today, I highly encourage you to go back to the beginning of January and watch the other videos because we've been talking about getting yourself organized and learning how to handle different things, uh, interfering with your schedule, getting your schedule back on track, just like when you have a New Year's resolution and it slowly dies and it never manifests into anything. These are all the coping me mechanisms that we're putting in place. Good morning, Chad. But these are all the coping mechanisms that I wanted to put in place for you all this year because it trickles down and it applies to everything that we've got going on in our lives, whether you're on a homestead, whether you're in a home and in the city, it doesn't matter. We're all trying to accomplish things and if we're constantly unable to cope and handle um, the things that are coming our way, if you end up in sickness and don't know how to handle it, it can be really a hard time and really depressing. And that's what we've been talking about and today I wanted to touch on something a bit deeper and I've been kind of putting it out there this year. Um, these are my beliefs. They don't have to be yours. Um, and I want you to hang in there because there's purpose in all of this. But the enemy plays a big role in trying to hijack our days and our lives. And he will use people. He will use people close to us. And often, you know, you don't realize that. There is something called, you know... Um, I just totally went blank. Um, spiritual warfare. And it it does happen. And I wasn't really too in tune with it before in my life either. But over the last 10 years, I started to recognize things for what it is and what it was. And it has really changed my life. Because along with having the ability to make choices in everything we do in our life, we have the ability to choose how to handle this just the same. And um, John 10.10 says that the thief's purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. That's the NLT version. And this is so true, guys. Um, something else that made a big impact on this whole thing in my mind is the fact that the enemy rules this earth. 
God rules heaven and God comes down here when he's invited. So people will often say, well, how come God, you know, if your God's so big, how come he allows all these awful things to happen? Well, this is my opinion, guys. Um, we've taken God out of the schools. We've taken God out of some of the churches. We've taken God out of everything. And, you know, prayer used to be something that was how the days were started in the schools. It taught our children, you know, that that was the basis of things. And it taught people, not just children, but everybody, that that was a simple thing we could do to reach out and, and ask for things. And when we allow the enemy to attack and to steal and to kill and to destroy and we don't invite God in, it's just going to keep manifesting. And what happens is all this evil is around us and we don't realize what it is. So instead of you realizing that it's, it, a simple misunderstanding between you and your husband in the early morning and you go to work and you allow the enemy to sit there and whisper in your ear all day long and just brew this um, bitterness and resentment and um, ugliness that when you get home the battle continues right you have to understand that the enemy will sit on your shoulder and do that with your friends with your family with your spouse with your children with your job, with your coworkers, and when you start to realize, and with your sicknesses too, everything, he will use everything. So when you are willing to realize that what is actually happening around you is not what it appears to be, and that it is just the enemy attacking, we have the choice to seek joy, and we have the choice to turn it around, and we have the choice to ignore him. And we also have the choice to call God into the situation and to, um, you know, pray that he strengthens us. The enemy has already lost, but when you allow him to sit in and stay where he's at, you're reinviting him in. Where when you ignore him, he goes back to where he belongs. So, again, these are my opinions, but this is something that's really important for people to realize. Um, we watch we don't have TV here we haven't had TV for I think probably 10 or 11 years now and we watch Amazon Prime videos and we also watch something called pure flicks and it is more wholesome quality filming some of them are lower budget and they might be a little cheesy but their quality is getting to be amazing um, there's some great movies out there like War Room um, these are the uh, oh I forget their name I just went blank on that too. It'll come back to me. But there's some really great movies out there. And uh, David A.R. White is an actor who uh, focuses on the Christian film industry. And he's the one that started Pure Flix. He is, he's got a book out. Um, his, his intentions with Pure Flix is really awesome. And it is continuing to grow. And we support them greatly and try to spread the word with them. And on Pure Flix, there is a video called divination. It's in the description and in the notes below. Um, but link up there. When you uh, check out Pure Flix, you can try it for a month for free. And I think your next month is free also. Um, you get a, extra um, benefits through using our link. Um, divination is one of the videos that they use. Good morning, Jill. And it was quite the eye-opener. So if you are unfamiliar with spiritual warfare and how the enemy works and you want your eyes opened up so that you can see things a little clearer when it comes to the struggles in your life and how um, that might be playing a role, divination is a very big eye-opener and um, really impacted me. So I wanted to share that. Um, the the thing is, guys, we have choices in everything we do. We can choose joy. We can choose sadness. We can choose to be miserable. We can choose to be happy. Um, I don't know if I can do this right now or not. I'm going to try. Let me see if I can pull up. Oh, and I wanted to apologize for last week. I just saw last week's video. I had a crack up when I was pulling my video in because uh, for YouTube, I was downloading it. I forgot to take my reading glasses off and I was absolutely cracking up when I saw my video because I look like Mr. Magoo and it was just absolutely busting me up. So anyway, um, like I said, you got to find humor and if you can't laugh at yourself, you know, for YouTube, oh, downloading hang it. on. I forgot my video. 
Okay, I want to share this in the comments and hopefully this will get in here. There we go. Okay, I just added a comment in the video. There we go. It's showing up. Now, if you want to take a few seconds later and watch that, I highly recommend it. I saw that video when I was sick. It is just a standard housewife having absolute joy in her life for four minutes. And I'm really excited for this woman because those four minutes allowed that video to go viral. And that video produced doors to open for her. And she is now using this opportunity and her platform to uh, reach people that are um, hurting and to share God's greatness. And her name is Candace Payne. And her book is called Laugh It Up. I shared her Bible study a couple weeks ago on the Facebook page. But she is an absolute hoot. I absolutely love her. Um, and I'm just excited to see that she's using her moments of glory to honor God. Because there's so many hurting people out there, as we've talked about. And her point and her Bible study is for people to live intentionally, basically. And to find joy, which is what I've been speaking about all year long. And when I found her Bible study and then noticed that she had books. And again, I saw her video when I was sick. I, I started doing a little more research. And what's funny is I kept saved that video so I can go back to it. Because that video is something that everybody needs when we are hurting, when we are in a funk, when we are in a bad mood, because there is no way you can watch that video and not laugh. And laughter is the biggest cure and aid for all kinds of things. Laughter is good for healing, guys. So, and, and that's why I love the title of her book. It's called Laugh It Up. And in the description below, you will find a bunch of quotes that I have pulled out of her book. Um, her link is there to purchase her book and see what other uh, things she has available. She's also a songwriter, and um, she's just such a funny soul. I love her. Um, but you can get her book at treyerwilderness.com slash Candice Payne, and that's P-A-Y-N-E. And um, I encourage you to watch the little snippet or four-minute video when we're done here. Um, but I'm just going to go through a couple of these with you guys and just share some sediments with you because um, she talks about John 10.10 10 also and how he steals our joy and how we allow him to keep us in places that we just shouldn't be. You know, um, a, a disagreement with your spouse is a disagreement with your spouse. Sometimes it's a misunderstanding. Sometimes it's nothing more than just that. And when you walk away and you focus on the joy in your life, it goes away. But if you harbor it and you allow the enemy to sit on your shoulder and just keep digging at you, it's just going to make your life miserable. Same with when you're sick and you can't you can't do the things you used to do. He will sit there and he will tell you you are useless. He did that to me until I was like, you know what? Go away. We, we, we are entitled to a life that we desire and we need to fight for that. So flick him off your shoulder and get on with it and, and see it for what it is. Because he will. He will use everything he possibly can. So one of the things that she says is, no matter how helpless you feel in your circumstances, circumstances ain't got nothing on joy. No matter what you're facing, you can choose joy anytime, at any moment you please. And it might just make all the difference. Something else that um, she said that really uh, caught me was, it's amazing how fast we can jump in our mind to an unfavorable outcome. In the thick of disappointment, we are hasty to allow our imaginations to run wild and never offer ourselves or others the benefit of the doubt. So something else that this brings to mind is when you do have those unfortunate setbacks in your day, whether it's a disagreement with your children or your spouse or a coworker, you know, we need to also show grace. And we've talked about that in that um, we all are entitled to a bad day and we are all going to experience a genuine bad day. What are you doing please show me some grace <laughs> <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> he just photobombed. <laughs> yes, I did. And I'm going to say that I'll be out there for a little while. Okay. A bunch of trees fell down across the lane, so. Oh, lovely. Do you need help? No. I, I should be able to get on. i got the chain and stuff, so. Okay. Sorry. She can continue now. <laughs> be safe. If you do need help, come get us. Yep. Love you. <laughs> okay, so. I think I remember where I was here. Um, we got to give everybody the benefit of the doubt, because genuinely, we are going to have bad days. It's not going to be all, you know, peaches and cream. It's just not always that way. And we are entitled to a bad day, and we got to give ourselves grace. So do remember that, that give yourself and others the benefit of the doubt. And, and, and joy isn't like that. Joy is born from hope, hoping for the best in people and then believing in them enough to give them the benefit of the doubt. So... It's just, she's got such good points. And her book, she's very open and she's very raw and she shares everything. And it's just, it's very helpful. I think that many people will benefit from her book. Something else she said is, you may be living your worst day, but grab on to hope that isn't the la that this isn't your last day. You know, so there's always hope for better and ahead, even if you do have a bad day. And something else I wanted to mention to you guys is when you are having an off day, and you have the opportunity, like um, for me, I am my own boss. Sometimes that can be good and bad. But um, if you are in a, in a business and you can't just walk away from your job, maybe just take a bathroom break and just regroup yourself. Um, I, I have found that when I'm having those off days and the enemy is attacking and I, I can visibly see that I'm getting nothing done, I can't get out of my head, you know, it's time to walk away. It is time to just clearly walk away and do something else. Uh, find your joy. Doodle. Remember we talked about doodling. Um, Shelly shared a great, uh, I almost said recipe. Um, uh, I'm having brain farts today. Sorry. Uh, pattern with me to, to knit um, fingerless gloves. So that's something I'm going to work on. Here is something else that I made. This is um, the start of a rug, actually, but I liked it so much and I liked the material so much I turned it into a coaster. Um, this is actually crocheted, um, just using uh, fabric instead of yarn. So I love the old crunchy and big uh, rugs, so that's what I was making. So step away. Give yourself the freedom and the benefit of the doubt to just take a break. Okay, guys? Um, also, I refuse to allow fear to steal my joy from a single day. When we have the enemy in our head, he creates fear. He creates fear and anger and all kinds of other negative things. When you, This is a really good point, too. This is something that I strive to pay attention to. When there's negativity floating around in my head, that's the enemy. Because like God said, he isn't here to share negativity with you. He's here to share life with you. He's here to speak words of encouragement and good in your life. So if you're hearing negative, that's not God, guys. Okay? And, and the bad things that happen in our life aren't God either. So just remember that. You know, a lot of people choose to be angry with him because of things that occur. But it, it's, it's not... A productive thought process or mindset so um, try to turn that around I have a choice every day to move away from what ifs and embrace why nots I urge you to start doing the same and and I do too oh no worries Chad um, so what we need to do is really focus on that guys is is Focus on the why nots. That's what I've been telling you. Step out of your comfort zone. Step away from your fear and, and strive to do the things that you want to do and not the things that you're, you're, you're lamenting over. Allow your fear to, to be pushed aside and, and strive for what's good in your life. Instead of lingering on the what ifs that are never guaranteed, why not trust and hope in the best that can become? Instead of letting fear hold you back, why not let hope expand the horizons of your future? Have you guys heard this before? I love her. This is so cool. I love finding like-minded people. But I want to encourage you to pick up this book. Guys, I, I love to read, and I don't normally get to read this much. I think I've been making it a point to 
read and have that to be something that I am focusing on pulling more of into my life this year because I started compiling the list of what I have read since the beginning of January and it's kind of mind-boggling because I don't know how I've had the time to read. But I ride a stationary bike also as part of my um, healing process. So when I'm on there, I do a lot of reading and at night I need to unwind. My brain just won't stop. Even when I do, after I do my dump, I you know my brain dump onto my Evernote, I just need to find find something that settles me and reading is that for me so another great book to add to your arsenal laughing it up or laugh it up and also um, I will include in the notes also the link to hopefully I'm not cutting out too bad today last week I know you guys were saying I was cutting out I just it just spun on me a little bit there but um, I'm also going to share the garden resources that I was supposed to share last week and I'm sorry I am running four businesses and striving very hard right now to get our Academy live and that's what I've been putting my efforts on so my communications with you guys besides our video have been lacking and I'm sorry of course when you focus your efforts in one spot you tend to lack in another. So bear with me here because once it's live, I won't be having to spend near as much time away. Um, but check out the uh, description today and check back later. I will post a um, update in the in the comments below um, so that you guys will have access to the gardening resources because now is the time that you should be planning your garden. I am planning my garden and I am really excited. This is my first garden since my surgery and I'm not going to go wild and crazy but I am going to get it started and get a little bit in there so that I can uh, do a little grounding in my garden while I'm barefoot and get some produce coming into the family that we don't need to pay for and just to be out there. I love gardening. So now is the time you want to be getting your seeds, planting things, and I've got all those resources for you. If you are not a gardener and you would like to be, I have some great classes available to you as well and some great notebooks that you can utilize um, to be able to plan your garden. Now remember guys, this whole process has been from January till now to help you get a better, better handle on organization in your life, keeping a schedule, and fighting off the struggles that we all have. And um, hopefully moving forward, you will be able to be more organized because that will help you in everything we do. Organizing a garden is um, important. Being organized about it and keeping your things organized. So it's going to travel as we go from um, the garden to raising animals to bees to all kinds of different things this summer. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to travel. So what have been some things that you have found helpful in these videos since January? Share that with me in the description. Remember to be thankful for the things around you. Learn to see things in your life for what they are. And find your joy. Find your happiness. So I hope you guys have utilized the list that we talked about way back in the beginning of January. I may just put those back in the notes next week as a reminder for you all. Um, does anybody have any other future uh, class ideas? And Chad, thank you for sharing yours on um, the uh, today's topic and how the enemy attacks and how he uses everything and everybody uh, in an effort to break us down. So when you hear that little negative voice in your head, guys, kick it out and and put something positive in there. Uh, I have the Mountain Boy working on something for me right now, and I'm really excited to start sharing those. He is working on creating some images for me on the positive quotes that I thrive on, and we will start sharing those on Instagram and here on Facebook. And um, I really think that we need to just pull ourselves out of our ruts and and really strive to reach our goals this year. So how are you guys doing, by the way, on your goal setting and on the goals that you, you set earlier? Chad says, looking for joy in everything in my life and press into Jesus more. Yeah, uh, and that's so important. And that is the thing. When the enemy is attacking, that is our greatest um, weapon, is pulling into Jesus and just understanding the truths of it all. Um, John 10, 10 says it all and anything and everything is possible 
through Jesus. So, and that's how I'm striving. That's how I'm living. That's how I'm focusing. And I don't mean to offend anybody that doesn't view life that way. Remember, this is my opinion. But my, what I'm sharing with you are things that have helped me in such a tremendous way. And I know they will help you. So, guys, I'm going to jump off of here. But when you are watching this after the fact, oh, hi, Deborah. I'm just getting ready to end the video. But definitely watch it and, and share your thoughts. And hopefully we will catch you next week. Um, but, guys, share your thoughts with me. If you are um, focusing and watching these videos and focusing on, on changing your life, let me know how... I can help you better. Let me know what topics you're struggling with. Let me know what topics you would like to know more about. Jill says she's decluttering, decluttering, and wow, does it feel great. Does it not? Is that not the most amazing thing? I forgot to share. The Mountain Man has been busy working on our bathroom. We are trying to finish the inside of our house before spring. It's just cosmetic things. And he is working in the bathroom. And we emptied out the bathroom, and he built a vanity. We had a makeshift vanity in there, kind of like my kitchen cupboards. And it is just such a refreshing feeling. And I, there's a couple areas in my downstairs that I had things piled on. You know how you have piles or you clean things off and you have it nice and clean and then everybody else tends to pile things on those areas. Yeah. So I clean them off and I have them just very open and airy and it just, it feels so good. It's so refreshing and it is such an incredible Morale booster, how about it, Jill? It changes everything. If you are depressed in your life for whatever reason, start decluttering your house and start cleaning. And I'm telling you, it will feel so good. Start in one area because it can be overwhelming, right, Jill? But you start in one spot and and just work your way around and it just starts to feel so good. So that's a positive change and that's good stuff. So keep working on it. Keep working on it, Jill. And guys, so glad to have you joining me. Thankful for you all. Thank you for your time. I know your time is valuable. And I will see you next Wednesday at 1030. And again, sorry I was late today. You guys take care. Have a fantastic day. Find your joy. All right. God bless. <laughs>